Uh, Ron McDonald, welcome back to mining.com. It's been a long time. Glad Great. you're back. Nice to have you glad here. Glad I'm back. Yeah, well, actually, glad we're back. Um, I just wanted to start off with uh, maybe just a brief introduction to American Vanadium and what exactly Vanadium is. Okay, American Vanadium is a junior mining company that is in late stage development of a deposit in a place called Eureka, Nevada. Uh, the deposit is pretty unique in the world. It's a vanadium deposit, and vanadium is traditionally used as a steel strengthener. If you get it really, really pure, you can use it in titanium alloys, but its, uh, it's production for over 100 years has been to create lightweight, strong steel. Interesting thing about vanadium and steel uh, is that the first big commercial production, uh, produ uh, pr production and use of vanadium steel was in the Model T Ford. So when that car was getting into production, it was too heavy with the traditional steel. That little motor couldn't push it. And Henry T. Ford had heard about this amazing vanadium steel, produced it, and then we started the, uh, uh, the industrial revolution around cars. It's now being used in a new industrial revolution, and that is around energy storage. Because with all those technologies that are out there for renewable energy and all that stuff, windmills and solar and lots of great stuff, wave power, the biggest problem problem to date has been how do you store all this stuff? How do you get the storage done in an economic fashion? So there's lots of great technologies. Lithium, it's in your camera uh, and it's in your laptop and that has a, a really high usage for storage but only for short periods of time. Get into big requirements for storage, a couple of really great technologies. Probably the leading technology is vanadium flow battery. Big battery, grid level storage, but you have to have an extremely, extremely pure source of vanadium. We've been blessed with this deposit because it's probably one of the purest sources in the world. It's about 98% clean when we uh, take it out of the, uh, off the heap of, uh, of, of, of uh, shale that it's in. And we can clean it to about 99.9995%, which means that it is extremely valuable for these mass storage batteries. And you know, our, our, at, here at American Vanadium, we've always had as our objective to find the highest value propositions for every pound of vanadium that we've got in that deposit. And our work over the last few years uh, has led us to that. And that is with a new partnership with Gildemeister. Uh, we're out there quoting batteries. We're working in collaborative efforts with large utilities and others. So we've just transitioned from a junior mining company. We're going to get our permits by end of year, put our mine into production. We are going to be a North American uh, energy uh, battery storage company. Great. So just to backtrack for a second, uh, Russia and China are traditionally the biggest producers. How does your deposit differentiate from what we see coming out of China and Russia? In a big way. Most of theirs is either as a result of a byproduct of the steel making process. So when you take vanadium, iron ore, sorry, some iron ore has uh, some vanadium in it. And when you're making your first, when you do your first pour, your first slag, you can refine that and get some vanadium out of it. So a lot of the uh, vanadium that is in China and Russia is coming from steel making processes and that's great except that it's pretty contaminated so you've got to then take all these contaminants out and that drives the cost up to get this very high purity vanadium uh, for us mother nature has already kind of done it, most of that it's 98 percent pure so to put it in some perspective not all vanadium can be uh, uh, purified to be used in flow batteries those that can't most are very expensive like if pentoxide, which is a vanadium product for steel, is say 650 a pound, to clean it on average would probably bring it up to 17 and 18 dollars just to produce it. Uh, we're very lucky in that uh, our cost to clean it over the cost of mining it is probably only about a dollar. So we've got a very pure, very low cost supply that's allowed us to make deals in the marketplace uh, to get some of the upside of that battery market in North America and that's what we've done with Gildemeister. So speaking of Gildemeister, last time we spoke you didn't yet have this partnership. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us, I mean it's been about a year now, right? Right. So can you tell us how that's been and how you've been able to kind of separate working on your deposit along with marketing and selling these uh, batteries? Great questions. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, to learn a new skill, and but we've done that. Gildemeister uh, is the number one producer of commercial vanadium flow batteries in the world. They've had commercial sales for almost four years now, so we've got lots of data um, on, on the, uh, the, uh, the production, uh, holding the uh, peak shaving, whatever we're doing with the battery, we've got lots and lots of data. They're German, 
They over-engineer everything. So you don't have to worry about the quality, and you do have to worry about that in some of the other competing batteries that are coming from other parts of the world. So with Gildemeister, uh, they are very focused. They bought Cellcube, which is the technology, the Cellcube battery, and they, uh, uh, they put their money where their mouth is. What they did is they went in, uh, at their head office uh, in Bielberg, Bielfield, Bielfield. What they did over there is that they uh, set up solar arrays, wind, put the batteries in, and about 40% of their energy requirements are, are coming from solar, renewable, using the battery. They've, they're refitting all of their manufacturing plants around the world for the Gildemeister products uh, to be energy cells and using this technology. So they've adapted them themselves. It's already paid back for them. <clears throat> so with Gildemeister, in order to um, gain the maybe 25-30 percent of global market share, you have got to have a steady, high-quality, well-priced supply of vanadium. Now why is that? It's that we're not 2 percent of the battery cost or 5 percent. We are anywhere from 40 to 65 percent of the cost of that big battery mm -hmm. is the vanadium electrolyte that's inside of it. So it's very unique. So what we did, instead of saying we'll sell it to you, we said, look, here's what we'll do. We will guarantee a stable price over a long period of time for a portion of our production and in exchange you give us the right to be Gildemeister in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So we're convinced that your technology works. Uh, you know that we can produce the, the quality electrolyte at a price that makes sense for you. So why don't we enter into a partnership. So over the last year we've been doing that, we've been learning from them. Uh, we have been uh, working with their uh, chemical and metallurgical people to get exactly the right magic elixir for their batteries uh, but we're happy I mean we could not be with a better company um, so it's a it, and, and it is an equal partnership there's been millions and millions and millions of dollars spent on their side developing this technology doesn't work if it's too expensive in the market we make it uh, we make it cost effective in the marketplace and in an exchange of that we get to develop the North American market how big is this market going to be everybody talks about this market well, I'll look at a competitor, Sumitomo, who are the other big guys in the marketplace out of Japan. Sumitomo just announced, I think it was a 60 megawatt hour battery, $400 million. And they have uh, indicated that by 2016, they expect to have about $3 billion in revenue from their battery division. So most analysts would say that Gildemeister uh, and and Sumitomo will probably split about 60 to 70 percent of the marketplace. Of that marketplace, everybody agrees in about five years, half the global market is going to be in the Americas. So we're strategically poised. Our deposit comes in late 2016, and uh, that's when everybody expects that the market will start to hockey stick a bit on the on the demand side. So we're, we're in a perfect position to do it. We're going to take our time. We're going to learn the markets. We're going to be humble uh, and tell people when we don't know. But what we do know is that the business model that we adapted, uh, adopted two years ago is absolutely the right one. So for our shareholders, instead of just doing the traditional and selling into steel and not having to go through this growth curve of building a, a brand new battery division, they probably would have got a eh, contribution to maybe about a buck fifty a pound. Uh, this way you're looking at many multiples of that. So I think that the shareholders that have held on to the stock during these, in these very bad market times uh, did it because uh, they got it. They, they did the equation in their head and they see what the outcome is. And I think they're satisfied with the decisions that management have made to go this unconventional route and to, uh, to really try to maximize the value of their investments in this company. Great. And uh, just a final question about financing. Uh, you guys have done a few private placements lately. Uh, what's the market reaction been like? How, how are you in those terms? The market is very, very tough. Uh, but we have been able to continue uh, at, a very, uh, at, at the very time where we're spending the most money in the history of our company. So we're at the very back end of our permitting. We expect to get out of permitting in the fall. So you don't have a lot of news because it's permitting stuff. You got to spend a lot of money on your detailed engineering and your mine and things like that. So, uh, wish they were better markets, but we have been able every time we go to market to get the money that we need uh, to move this thing forward to the point that we will make the decision to go and uh, raise the capital and debt that's required to build a mine. And that's coming very, very fast. So, tough markets, the markets have been good to us, and in every market when we've gone out, we've been able to, uh, to raise what we need. So, we're okay with that. Great. Thanks very much for your time. My pleasure.